Good morning, Zodiac, and welcome. Doing the Soul Family Read this morning. It's uh, just after dawn here in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. Um, make sure this is even. Yes, okay. <laughs> Virgo rising coming out. I saw a meme the other day said a Virgo nightmare. It was just a picture of a, a painting on the wall. It was like this, you know. <laughs> well, Virgo rising. It's a little true. <laughs> it's a little true. So this uh, week, I think, um, kind of with this reading, uh, going with what's relevant to me um, as a theme, um, you know, in terms of manifestation and spirituality and love and relationship, kind of leave out romance with this reading, <laughs> focus more uh, um, on the other stuff. Monday, today always, Aries and Taurus heart spread day and I'll be adding back the uh, singles read the full singles read um, hopefully the first of the month I'm moving and getting better internet and getting married <laughs> in November so uh, a lot of things going on but Mondays will always be either for the singles or any, probably anything I do that's astro related Astrologer 2 is going to be uh, Monday, and we try to keep that uh, so I can do six, uh, all 12 signs in six days, so it's two signs a day. So I really like that rhythm, and why not keep it uh, even? But you know, man, the theme is like um, it's, I guess, it's lack mentality the Five of Pentacles. And you know, I grew up uh, with a single mom, uh, struggling, difficult childhood. As I've said before, as it turns out, you know, not as bad as many people I found. Um, using the Ethereal Visions deck, by the way, if you care, I keep forgetting to say. You know, so, you know, here, I say here in Mexico, a lot of people come from Mexico City. And it's almost no matter how well off they're doing, um, there's, it, I don't think it's, this is necessarily bad. It's probably necessarily bad with me. There's an element of it. Uh, the lack mentality that's not necessarily bad it's the Saturn groundedness and my grandparents were like this and these people are uh, just they're very aware of resources you know they're not going to leave the water going they don't leave lights on it's like a deep instinct I don't really see anything wrong with it um, but for me it's it so permeates my existence this this general feeling it's kind of like my relationship with reality. And I only made a joke for years that what my real problem is I'm uh, challenged. I'm not mentally challenged, I'm reality challenged. <laughs> not emotionally challenged, I'm reality challenged. And it's kind of like, I feel like now it's so like this, uh, I can feel like my aura, how it kind of uh, interacts and blends with the surrounding environment. And at a very deep level, I, I feel threatened. You know, I had the very... Uh, difficult childhood kind of had to raise myself um, uh, things uh, didn't seem easy uh, people were scary particularly men <laughs> my mom bring home so uh, um, by the time I was 17 you know I was in therapy and you no know, matter I've, I've been married to women who were severely sexually molested and um, I've had deep relationships with others seems to be some kind of karmic thread it's something I've, I've kind of thought about a lot uh, and it's important to my work because apparently it's not that uncommon you know but what happens is no matter how much work you do you're kind of left with this it's really hard to shake this feeling of like you're I'm in a hostile environment I never felt like I belong here kind of don't understand people it took me a long time uh, to understand them I was at the beach yesterday actually here I'm uh, sitting on the beach, and my girlfriend's doing her exercise in the shade. And I'm just enjoying the sun. I'm looking out at the water. I'm thinking again. I've thought this many times. It's always at the shoreline. I look out, and I think, like, I've been here before. It's not deja vu. It's not deja vu. It's like I've been on this planet before. It's such a clear feeling. And I can almost remember, like, that life. And I've had this for years. Even when I was an atheist, I didn't believe in God or past lives, okay? Up until uh, 2007, that all changed in an experience. So it just seems strange. And I think, like, 
I'm beginning to understand a lot of things, and uh, it, it's a feeling. So all the manifestations about them, hints or moons, I have to go there. So it's, I think there's too much emphasis on thoughts. Thoughts and thoughts are important element. I mean, they're it's all connected, but it's a feeling, you know. Um, the feeling I began to have was I, I love myself. I really, really do. And um, I love life, and, and, and I really wanted love, you know. Uh, but here's the thing. Like, I don't have any confidence in my ability to do practical things. I don't know how I did as well as I did in life. It's a damn miracle. I worked in a concrete company, you know, a manager. Could care less about any of it, but a lot, a lot of hard hours into it. Uh, but no matter how much money I made, no matter how much money I had in the bank, I mean, it's always just basic insecurity. Uh, and I finally realized it's spiritual. There's no answer to this subtle dynamic that we have with existence other than spiritual there's no security other than spiritual and what is that it's just accepting that whatever happens win lose draw it's for the best you know i feel like i'm almost there i feel it so strongly i feel it like in relationship that's what hit me first that's what i've been working on and it was like i I didn't really much care what the other person did. I wasn't too worried. Like, are they talking to someone? Are they not? Because, and I, and I told them this at the beginning, I said, you got to understand, it's like, I don't, it's not so much that I trust you. It's like, I trust spirit. I see what I'm looking at. I have astrology. I have many resources. Um, and so I want to get that kind of alignment into... Uh, the material world and um, it's really just really doesn't matter how much money you have it's just do you feel like secure like you've got things covered you know you're not under attack you're not under assault I mean you know America don't get me going the fear of death cult you know you just don't have fear that's the key right I, it's just that temperance energy card the Sag card of feeling like everything's okay and the universe is like oh, okay okay everything's cool it's gonna bring you it's kind of I think what the manifestation is, is spirit is bringing us the lessons we need based upon, you know, what we learn. And it's all, to me, it's about really feelings. So it's always trying to help us, even though to us it doesn't look like help. We lose our job. We lose our marriage. We get sick. You know, I, I almost don't want to go into it. But I look back on this catastrophic event that you could say destroyed my life and almost killed me as as literally the best thing that ever happened to me, the greatest gift I've ever been given. When I see everything that's come out of it now over like so many years later. So that's kind of what I'm focusing on for this read. Make it a little general spirit in the name of light and love so it serves the greatest good. What can you tell us that's helpful? What can spirit tell us that's helpful in this journey? <laughs> Seriously, thank you, spirit. Look how beautiful that is. I really should do it right now, this reading I've been wanting to do. This is the position of where we are at in and around love and relationships, manifestation, our spiritual morality. Or I did a reading the other day, but really thinking about like this reading, maybe make this regular too, somehow once a week or something. Um, a status check with our higher self, you know, how our alignment is. And so this is in this position, and I was... the question today is what can spirit tell us to help us in our, our journey and our alignment and it, I think it's telling us like you are everything you are everything you're the empress you know strong creative abundant caring wise still the empress is still the empress uh, has peace uh, but it's a strong peace. It's not that kind of peace like you're stoned. You know, you know. It's just, you know, she's there. <laughs> and she's not easily going to be disturbed. And I think this is just absolutely amazing. You know, I'm in a Facebook group <laughs> called the Empress Club about manifestation, a manifestation of soulmates uh, run by a tarot reader. Uh, 
And uh, I love the Empress Club, and I was kind of surprised they let me join, you know. Um, but why not, you know? There's an element of Venus here. Venus uh, is uh, on this uh, today, <laughs> is the full moon. It's amazing. Did a reading on that? Please look at it. It's in the description below, or uh, you can find it. It's just uh, from yesterday, Sunday. Just all sign reading, okay, uh, on that kind of energy. Um, but this is, uh, Venus is at about 10 degrees, I think, Scorpio, okay? So in the midst of this, uh, the big thing I keep saying is the 23-degree uh, Mercury in Libra and the 23-degree Jupiter in Sagittarius, which is a, just exact, exact trine and wonderful energy. So wherever that is in your chart, um, it's going places. And this is Venus energy. Look at your Venus in your chart, no matter where it is. You know, look at it in the progress, uh, particularly in... A relationship to where your progressed sun and moon and everything is um, because um, I really get the sense of abundance here and, and beauty and like this grace and uh, someone that can um, take not only take care of themselves but can take care of others and if this empress is someone people might come to you know and you're gonna have an audience with the empress you, your, your land is in dispute you can't get any help what are you gonna do Go to the Empress, who's going to make the final decision? The Empress. Now, this is in our blocking position, okay? So, we don't need to look at this as uh, reversed, I don't believe. Sometimes I look in the blocking as if there is reversed energy of the card. Uh, here, it's very straight up. Um, we need to defend ourselves. So, kind of what I'm, th this card kind of represents kind of what I was saying all in this long intro. Uh, this dynamic between the world where we feel boundaries, it's boundaries. It's not having porous boundaries. How do you love and be open and be fluid and be flowing and, and not be taken advantage of and killed by some um, psychopath? Um, because we're in this 3D world. Um, so it's saying even the Empress has to have this, you know. Make no mistake, you know, Seven of Wands, it's righteous defense of the castle. Now, I don't know how that's exactly our creating boundaries. Our castle is ourself. You know, even in astrology, the sun or the kingdom, it's your sun, it's your kingdom, yourself. So we're defending ourself from, look, these other people. Man, it just goes so many different ways. I feel it. Um... So maybe part of being the empress and being balanced and having this, getting out of this feeling of being um, just tense all the time, like, you know, is, am I going to lose my money? How's my health? Um, let's see what our advice is for this. Oh, my God, guys. These are two of the most beautiful women in this deck. I really... So this is us, and I think it's a spirit trying to tell us that you are beautiful, you are an empress, you are abundant, you really, truly can manifest anything you want. We have to defend ourselves. There is the 3D world with the seven of wands. You can't just sit back and do nothing. But the advice from spirit is the high priestess card, the most spiritual card maybe in a deck, I think, um, speaks to the 12th house to pisces energy um intuition psychic ability look you've got the empress combined with the high priestess here so it's also a, a strong emphasis on a divine feminine energy and now i would look at the seven of wands here in between for any female i'm just going to say this you got the seven of wands very masculine divine masculine energy um, it is the energy of, um, you know, divine uh, feminine is uh, that empathic energy, receptive energy. So this is the projective energy. And you've got these two powerful major arcanas. Again, I mean, the empress and high priest. This is like, uh, imagine the empress of the empire and then her high priestess are speaking to each other in a secret chamber. What the? I, I'm trying not to curse on my channel. It's not easy. What the heck would these two be talking about? 
is heavy. And the fact that they're in a private chamber means that there's walls, there's doors, locked doors, guard, whatever it takes. So, because this is abundance, it's not someone living in a cardboard box on the streets, guys. Tremendous wisdom. It'd be, I'd be very hard pressed to see this. I'm sorry, as a young person. Although it could be, I mean, they're, I, they're, what are they called, crystal children, light children, because, you know, they come in knowing, how could they know these things, they're 20 years old, and um, they bring it in with them and keep it, I've talked about temperance, <laughs> and temperance, wow, what a powerful reading, the Empress, the Seven of Wands, the High Priestess, and now we have uh, my card, the Sagittarius card, temperance. The angel being protected, being balanced, you know, it's just the water doesn't even hit the ground. She's just got it under control. And I was saying, in terms of this energy, I didn't set this up. Thank you, Spirit, I should say. I mean, it's my own reading, and thank you just so much. It's a beautiful card, and it's that energy. Everything's okay because you're not worried there's no red flags there's no fires to put out there's no fucking ooh, there's no darn drama going on in your life you know because you have the empress and the high priestess energy going on and you know this is about as far away from jerry springer as you could possibly get this energy right here <laughs> put it that way and then of course you go into temperance energy now uh, which is this feeling that everything's okay. You, you laugh, you work, you go about your day, you make love, you eat, <laughs> you sleep, because there's there's no problems. Uh, and again, I said, though, I'm almost there, really, in reality, but I still have that feeling. And so I feel like this high priestess means so much to me. It's about letting go and letting God. I mean, I don't know how to say it other than that. Let go, let God, David. Let go, let God. David, do not try to control the situations. Have trust that God will bring to you, David, what it is that you need for your soul's growth. And trust in this and fall into this and give faith to this, David. This is the way I pray. Because I'm on that and I get that. And it's really hard. I call it the uh, wolves eating the caribou alive conundrum because I was told everything is perfect. And I immediately thought, well, what if you're, you know, the caribou being eaten alive by a pack of wolves? It's a bit of a conundrum. I mean, how, for the wolves, it's kind of perfect. Sure, give you that. Um, for the caribou, hard pressed to see how they're going to perceive that as perfect. But here we go, friends. We just have work to do. I love this card, the craftsman, the craftswoman. This one really emphasizes here in the ethereal visions illuminated tarot deck. It really emphasizes cooperation, coordinating with other people. Um, you can see them looking together, almost like they're looking at something and talking about what they're going to do. I really get the feel. I love this card. It really captures the feeling of it. It kind of takes away in this particular deck to me a little bit of the good worker card that it is. So make no mistake, now um, it's, you know, this empress is going to roll up her sleeves and do something. Um, and do it very well. And do it with, uh, this is two, the three of pentacles to me is that craftsperson that's lost in what they're doing. You know, they're so... Uh, into their creation, into their work, and it's creation, whatever it is, um, that they're become kind of one with it and other things are, are forced out. There's, in other words, this feeling with the world's gone. They're kind of at this peace, at peace in creation. And we're better to be at peace. <laughs> yeah. And you know, maybe at peace is where we have, have to best create. Now I feel like my book's coming, and I really need peace for that. It's going to be intense uh, work. So I feel like it's a great reading, guys, and thank you. I'm trying to do the best I can to grow the channel. Give me that like, uh, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. That helps a lot. Make a comment. Comments help. Likes help. Thank you, guys.